people signing on behalf of the whole village. This is from Bamiyan. These 40 meters of cloth covered with signatures are a message from Bamiyan to the drafters of Afghanistan's new constitution. More than 100,000 Afghans had their hopes and aspirations for their country entered into the record. Letters were typed or handwritten, and those who cannot write signed with thumbprints. This is the first time in Afghanistan's history that the people have been asked what kind of government they want for their nation. I am more than satisfied when I see, when I read the histories of constitution making process elsewhere in the, in the world, when I have uh, studied the constitution making process of my own country, I think what happened this year, it doesn't have any precedence. The Constitutional Commission sent out more than 450,000 questionnaires to solicit views on what the new constitution should contain. All responses were read, categorized and entered into a database along with additional recommendations that were either sent or made in person by Afghan citizens and interest groups. In the tens of thousands of submissions, the Commission found a common desire for peace and unity. The prospect of a new constitution is being met with great expectations throughout Afghanistan. It is a country where religion and tradition are deeply respected and one's heritage is a source of pride. But the results of almost a quarter century of fighting occupation and then each other were devastating. The challenge Afghans face is to agree on a constitution that will provide a framework to improve conditions for all Afghans. The country and its diverse people are taking part in a discussion about their future. Afghans have welcomed the opportunity to speak their minds. A group of Pashtun tribal elders traveled from Khost province to Kabul to meet with President Karzai and discuss reconstruction needs in their region. Asked about the new constitution, the elders say they want the country's regions to be more equally represented in the government. For the years ahead, we want a constitution that serves the people, not the leaders. No government has ever granted equal rights to the Afghan people. Therefore, we want the government, now and in the future, to grant equal rights to all Afghans. The whole nation should have equal rights. The elders say that a commitment to equality would reduce the distrust and fighting between ethnic groups and militias. They will lay down their guns. We are sick and tired of guns, of warfare. We have been destroyed by guns and we don't want them in our future. Students at Kabul University share the desire for an end to violence between Afghans. They also say they want a constitution that enshrines not only democratic elections, but democratic governance. I want a government that comes from the people and is for the people, not an authoritarian government by force. Some of Afghanistan's ethnic diversity can be seen in the faces of merchants in the village of Mukur. The townspeople heard about the drafting of the constitution this summer. They came to explain the constitution at our mosque here. Our hope is to have good government, security and stability. In the city of Gardez, as in all of Afghanistan, the vast majority of the people are Muslim. They want their government to be in accordance with Islamic principles. Hopes expressed throughout Afghanistan are echoed in Kandahar, a city with a long history of rule by force and oppression. We want a government that is chosen by the people, not by force. A government that takes power by force is no good. One that is chosen by the people is good. All we want is peace and security in our country, an end to corruption and brutality. Afghanistan is a country of long-held traditions that define the roles of men and women. 
the drafters of the Constitution sought agreement on common Islamic values that exclude the extremist interpretations of the Taliban regime. They also addressed oppressive customs that have no basis in religion, as they sought to create a document that was fair to all Afghans in all aspects of life, a document that supports a unified nation. In this constitution, there are two things that address this issue. Number one, all citizens of Afghanistan are equal and have equal rights under the law. Number two, all positions in the government and state shall be based on merits, not according to majority or minority, political or tribal affiliation. In Afghanistan, traditions and customs in some areas are stronger than religion. Sometimes they even have nothing to do with religion. We are attempting to ban those traditions that contradict religion. This is the first time that this is being done. David Sedney is the United States Chargé d'Affaires in Kabul. He points to the role of Islam in an earlier Afghan constitution. I, I don't see this as a uh, competition. Uh, in the sense of competition between religious law and the Constitution. Uh, the 1964 Constitution, which was uh, widely admired both inside and outside of Afghanistan. In fact, the 1964 Afghanistan Constitution was used as a model for constitutions by other Islamic countries. Uh, it defined the uh, role of government and religion, saying that there would be nothing in the Constitution or laws of Afghanistan that would be contrary to the quote, principles of Islam. The city of Kandahar was founded in the 4th century BC by Alexander the Great and was conquered by numerous invaders over its long history. Kandahar was pounded to rubble during the war against the Soviet occupation. It emerged in the 1990s as the stronghold of the Taliban until their defeat two years ago. Kandahar's battered people are trying to recover and build a peaceful future in an area of the country still fighting remnants of the old regime and their allies. It is in this unlikely location that 45 Kandahari and women from all over Afghanistan met in early September to draw up the Afghan Women's Bill of Rights. The document was presented to President Karzai as the women's input into the drafting of the Constitution. The demands that topped the list of 16 rights were for education, health services, and security. The writing of a constitution is very important for women, and it's important that they take part in the process. The constitution will not be written over and over again, only once. So women should make sure its provisions include women's rights. If women participate in the process, they will be taken into consideration. I think that's important because women make up half of the population and their input into the constitution is very important and constructive. Kabul's Babur Gardens reopened this summer and are once again a favorite place for schoolboys to play hooky. The gardens were devastated when Afghan warlords fought each other for control of the city. Hundreds of flowers and trees have been replanted, but there is still more work to be done. When Afghanistan ratifies a constitution, it will be an important milestone on its road to recovery. God willing, in December we shall present to the lawyer Jurga this national document that is based on the wishes, aspirations and proposals of the people. The warlord culture is the biggest concern to the Afghan people and the largest threat to democracy and stability. This is the task of the state. If it wants to improve the situation, force must be eliminated. Law is law, force is force, and the two don't go together.
Force must be eliminated in order for the law to be implemented. It's like planting wheat. You must first prepare the soil. The Constitution can only be implemented, he added, if the heroes of battle can become the champions of peace.